Well, there are only about a couple of weeks left in the General Assembly session, and while Georgia lawmakers move forward with major bills, others have fallen by the wayside. With me to break down the legislation affecting Georgia businesses is partner at Thompson Victory Group, Howard Franklin, and president at Robinson Republic, Brian Robinson. Thank, thank you both thank for you. being here. Absolutely. Uh, earlier in the show, we were talking a little bit about the proposed state authority to run the airport. I want to get your take on whether or not you think that'll move through of the house and you know it really has this is the farthest that it's ever gone so what are your thoughts brian well speaker ralston has said that it's not going to be taken up in the house so i while the proponents in the senate certainly can rejoice that they got the ball further down, down the field than ever before uh, it's not going to get to the governor's desk uh, obviously this is something that uh, has strong Republican support there in the Senate, but the Atlanta business community as well as the Atlanta City Hall right. have been firmly opposed. I'd imagine it wasn't something that Governor Kemp wanted to have to face in his first session. It would be wise of folks who are interested in proposing an authority or taking over the airport to look at the precedent set by uh, Charlotte and North Carolina, to also think about all the indebtedness that the airport's taken on and managed very well to this, to this point, and to think about how they would get through those hurdles if they're gonna have a serious effort uh, for an airport authority. Yeah, and it, it, the FAA, the federal regulations, make it very difficult for a state authority to take an airport from a city. And so it could have been stopped even if it had passed right. by those. And look, I think it's fair to have the conversation. I think part of the argument is positive that the Ports Authority and the World Congress Center Authority or state authorities, they're well run. They give back a lot to the state. The airport obviously is important to the entire region and state, not just the city. So I understand where they're coming from. It's a, it's a debate worth having, but I think the General Assembly is gonna end up in the right place on this. Let's talk a little bit about the budget, 2020 budget. Uh, Governor Brian Kemp has outlined, you know, some initiatives that he really felt strongly about. Teacher pay, wanted to, to give teachers a raise. Uh, the budget includes transit, mental health. Um, did he fulfill the campaign promises th that he wanted to? He fell a little short on teacher pay. What are your thoughts on, on where the budget stands? He has worked on expanding rural health care, and you're seeing that process move forward with the Medicaid waiver. He did get some education pay raises put into place within uh, within a, a tight budget. Uh, and you're also seeing him fight for the abortion law that he said that he would pass when he was in the primary last year. He's willing to go out on the edge for things that he promised. So he's fulfilling some of the campaign promises. Are there some Democratic wins this session that we're seeing? A lot of ambitious goals financially, and thankfully the economy continues to hum along. It gives him an opportunity to fulfill some of those. You, you got to go back to the tape and look at the fact that we had a really evenly divided electorate uh, last November. And so a lot of folks aren't necessarily you know, super enthused about uh, what priorities this governor has made his own in his first year. Uh, in terms of Democratic wins, I think that there are a, a few, and I think that the Democrats are certainly asserting themselves in a different way. Now that we're up to what, 75 in the House uh, in particular, I think we're, we're growing in, our, in terms of getting to a place where there's parity and we can actually contribute uh, to the leadership of some of these conversations. So health care has been a, a, a big topic this session. Um, certificate of need did not pass the repeal of certificate need did not pass over crossover day. Do you think it'll be tacked on to another bill? Where everybody's certainly <laughs> uh, on high alert yeah. for that. And there are several different uh, competing versions of that. Uh, one is uh, being done by uh, Senator Dean Burke, who was a doctor from Southwest Georgia, that I think hospitals are more okay with. But you obviously saw a fierce resistance from the hospital community, right. you know, making the argument that you're going to take away the paying customers and the most profitable procedures and leave hospitals with uh, who we all depend on for emergency care. You know, a lot of things that it provides, those would be undermined potentially. And that argument won the day on the House floor. The leadership really pushed that and lost by a fairly significant margin. So that might make them a little reticent about bringing it back. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there are also a number of other uh, nascent healthcare issues that have yet to be discussed, or not even to be discussed, but to have been decided. And I think as long as you've got things like a Medicaid expansion still out there, yeah. looming, it's gonna be difficult to deal with one uh, while the other one is still in, the, in, the, in play. Any surprises in the last couple of weeks that, that you foresee Always surprises. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to, to tell uh, viewers how to foresee them. I mean, as you guys already mentioned, uh, using vehicles, I, we're engaged in a number of these where we're 
have a bill that didn't get where we wanted it on crossover day and looking for vehicles that are addressing the same parts of state code and trying to figure out how to get them into the conversation but before April 2nd. I know that will be happening for a number of other folks down there. I expect to see plenty of that in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, Crystal, often what we see as a surprise is it isn't usually something getting tacked on at the last minute. Big things don't happen that way. Little right. things happen at the last minute like that. But often what's the surprise is things that we all think are going to pass and die do. on the last day of session and don't make it. It could be something like the abortion bill where the, ha where the Senate takes a slightly different position and the conference committee doesn't come up with a new report. Something we think is moving down the tracks doesn't quite make it. There are no guarantees, so we'll keep our eyes in the last couple of weeks. Thank you both for being here. Thank, Thank you. you.